Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. And I'm all dressed up like a medical professional because I want you to pay attention to this story on air quality, coal-fired power plants, and health in Alberta. On January 30th, 2017, the Financial Post ran an article entitled, Alberta's NDP politicians are determined to fix an air quality problem, but there's no evidence it exists. The author, Warren Kinzierski, an associate professor in the School of Public Health at the University of Alberta, he and his co-author found that the alleged air quality problems from coal plants in Alberta don't exist. So naturally, we tweeted Dr. Vipond, the anti-coal advocate for CAPE in Alberta, to ask what he had to say. After all, since 2013, Dr. Vipond and Pembina Institute and a couple of other charities have claimed we must phase out coal to solve what they claim are serious health problems and costs. Dr. Vipond responded by tweeting, I'll start with the bias in the source researchers, and he referred to a Desmog blog article which claimed that a $54,000 contribution by Transalta to the U of Alberta was evidence that the Kinserski study was biased. So if funding is the measure of whether something is objective or not, we tweeted back asking what did he have to say about the more than $1 million in funding that Pembina Institute had received from the Foreign Oak Foundation. Pembina received some $400,000 of that the year prior to the publication of their report, Damning Coal. And they thank Oak in the front cover of their report for the generous funding. What of the fact that Dr. Vipon's organization, CAPE, is funded by the Pembina Institute and Bullfrog Power and CUPE all proponents of wind and solar. Doesn't Dr. Vipon's logic then mean that their support of the Pembina report is biased? And what of Dismog Blog? According to Dismog's website, Mr. Hogan, the person who started Dismog Blog, was trained by Al Gore and sits on the board of the Suzuki Foundation, both proponents of wind and solar. Hardly objective sources, if you ask me. And what of the fact that Dr. Kinzierski's other long-term peer-reviewed papers, one done over six years, one done with the city of Edmonton, show there's no evidence of air quality crisis that the Pembina Institute has claimed? Likewise, the Waters and Gabos long-term study of patient health records performed by Alberta Health Services some years ago show that there were no discernible effects on health or mortality in the industrial heartland region, which is east of Edmonton and also downwind from the coal power plants. The study was done when air pollution was much more prevalent due to less regulation and lack of emissions management technology. As well, a report on pediatric emergency department visits for asthma in Alberta show that the rate of visits in non-urban municipalities is double that of Calgary where there are no coal-fired power plants nearby and Edmonton where there are coal-fired power plants nearby. In short, no matter how you dress it up in doctor's clothing, the evidence does not support the claim that coal-fired power plants cause any serious health issues in Alberta. If anything, affordable power allows Albertans to experience the best medicine has to offer because every hospital, medical clinic, diagnostic lab or service needs reliable, high-quality, affordable power to provide its modern health services. So it seems we've been given a costly misdiagnosis on coal and health by CAPE and Pembina Institute. They've cost Albertans billions of dollars with faulty information based on computer models, not empirical evidence. This raises serious ethical, moral, and legal questions. And the question is, what's the cure? For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Join us, become a member, donate, help us do this research. Help us maintain affordable, reliable power in Alberta.